Morning, I'm Shay McAllister. Doug has the night off. We begin tonight with the touching tributes to Bardstown Police Officer Jason Ellis. Today, marking 10 years since he was ambushed on the way home from work. His children, just six and seven years old then, they are teenagers now. Back in Bardstown tonight, remembering their father. Ellis was shot and killed on May 25th, 2013. He had just signed off and took his normal route home, but he didn't make it home. Instead, he was ambushed off of an exit on the Bluegrass Parkway. Now, 10 years later, the community is still mourning and no closer to justice. WHAS 11's Connor Steffen and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie were in Bardstown tonight to honor the fallen officer. In Bardstown, Kentucky, the significance this state holds isn't lost on anyone. It's a moment that bears both the weight of grief and the strength of unity. The day America's most beautiful small town experienced one of its darkest moments, May 25th, 2013. Day one turned our family upside down. In a moment, our lives were suddenly changed forever. When someone ambushed and killed Officer Jason Ellis. He selflessly put his life on the line to protect and serve his community. A tragedy leaving so many questions in its wake, so many still left unanswered. Leaving us navigating unspeakable heartbreak and endless questions so many questions and the most important question of who and why while theories and what ifs linger time does not that sobering reality emphasized by jason's wife amy ellis brown who has since remarried but still finds solace in tributes that keep his spirit alive it's important not only for his family and friends but especially important to his sons that he left behind his sons that were six and seven when he was tragically taken and are now are grown young men at 16 and 17. It was standing room only in the Bardstown Police Department's parking lot as hundreds came together to honor the fallen officer. He was a devoted family man. He loved me and the boys. Some strangers, some close friends. Or to some, I'm sure it's an eternity. To me, it seemed like it was just yesterday. Some who know deeply the toll waiting can take. Those like Sherry Ballard, who continues to wait on answers in her daughter's disappearance and husband's death all these years later. Ten years later, we realized that those who truly knew and loved Jason understand that he will forever be more than just a memory. Just as much was evident from the outpouring of support shown Thursday. From here in the heart of Bardstown, all the way out to Chaplin, Kentucky where Ellis can be found in his final resting place. We greatly miss him every day and look forward to meeting him again in heaven. Gathered together, gazing down at his grave, Jason Ellis's family is steadfast in their belief justice will come for their fallen hero. Along with those you just heard from countless law enforcement officers, the FBI spoke at this memorial. They said men and women are working every day to solve Jason's murder. Until then, they will not rest. In Bardstown, Kentucky, Connor Steffen, the WHS 11 night team on your side. Kentucky State Police is investigating Officer Ellis's case with help from agencies like the FBI. The FBI is offering a reward of up to $50,000 for information leading to a conviction in the case. You can submit tips at tips.fbi.gov. You can also call them at 1-800-CALL-FBI. Also happening tonight, an emotional gathering in Scott County, Kentucky. The community coming together to honor a fallen deputy. Deputy Caleb Conley was shot and killed earlier this week during a traffic stop on I-75 right near Georgetown. Conley, a young husband and father, was with the Scott County Sheriff's Office for about four years. He was previously with the Army. Tonight, the small town gathered with Conley's family to recognize the ultimate sacrifice. And for the ones that didn't know him, the best way for me to describe him is a hero, an inspiration, full of heart, a man that served his country, his family, his friends, his community, with all of his heart, not just half, not a little. Stephen Xingsheng has been arrested in connection with that shooting. Deputy Conley will be laid to rest next week. A visitation is planned for Wednesday, May 31st from 4 until 9. The funeral will be the next morning at 10. Both will be held at the Scott County High School in Georgetown, Kentucky. He will then be buried in Cynthiana. If you'd like to help Deputy Conley's family, we've got some information on how you can do so on our website, whas11.com. And an update late tonight from LMPD, we learned LMPD officer Nick Wilt is showing progress in his recovery. His family says officer Wilt is showing improved cognitive function and has even started walking again with a harness. 
Officer Wilch was shot in the head while responding to the shooting at Old National Bank on April 10th. In this latest update, his family says his determination and fighting spirit are evident as he confronts these challenges head on. Today, a former Manual High School teacher convicted of possessing child pornography was granted shock probation. Back in December, James Miller there pleaded guilty to two counts of possession or viewing matter portraying a sexual performance by a minor. He was sentenced to three years in prison. However, today a judge granted him shock probation, resentencing Miller to serve five years probation. In his motion for shock probation, Miller's attorney argued his client couldn't complete the required sex abuse treatment program while in jail, but he would be able to complete the program in Mississippi, where he plans to move. Today, the Indiana Medical Licensing Board heard arguments on whether a doctor should lose her license after helping a 10-year-old rape victim have an abortion. Last summer, Dr. Caitlin Bernard talked with a reporter during a rally about helping the young girl from Ohio. Now, Attorney General Todd Rakita claims Bernard broke the state law. He's, his office said that the doctor did not report the girl's abuse to Indiana and broke privacy laws by talking about it. However, Bernard and her attorneys argue she followed IU's health policy when it comes to reporting abuse. I don't think that anybody would have been looking into this story as any different than any other interview that I've ever given if it was not politicized the way that it was by public figures in our state and in Ohio. This omission, this omission of failure to report is the cause. The effect of that failure was a child returning to live with her rapist for five days. The hearing, which has been going on for most of the day, is currently still happening. It is anticipated to go well past midnight tonight. Norton Healthcare has an update on a recent cyber event that impacted many of their systems. The event is still under investigation and Norton says IT experts are currently working to bring the systems back online. In the meantime, they've released an online resource to help patients navigate where they need to go while they work to return normal operations. You can find a link to that resource on our website, whas11.com. A Louisville business owner says he is losing thousands of dollars as a city-run construction project continues right in front of his restaurant. The construction's at 18th and Muhammad Ali, right in front of Anthony Sutton's diner. Louisville Forward says the construction is part of the city's beautification project, which will be bringing in benches and better sidewalks. But Sutton tells us the construction's preventing customers from coming in, and he says he can't get any help from the city. Nobody has reached out to help me. Nobody other than, oh, well, we can help you uh, rebuild your credit and you can get a loan. I shouldn't have to get no loan. This is, I didn't do this on purpose. This, is, this was done to me. A Louisville Forward spokesperson told us the city doesn't compensate businesses for lost wages when it comes to construction. They assure crews will be wrapped up from in front of that building by May 30th. Today, the University of Kentucky received what they believe is the largest donation of any Kentucky university. Late alumni Bill Gatton's foundation has gifted the university $100 million. The university says Gatton's donation will go to UK's College of Agriculture, Food and Environment. In honor of Gatton's parents, the college will now be called Martin Gatton College of Agriculture. Gatton died in April of 2022. He was a longtime supporter of the university. Mr. Gatton had a heart for the university and for the whole state and beyond. The Gatton Foundation's investment in our college recognizes both our strong campus presence and our legacy of serving every county in Kentucky. He understood that our commitment is hyper-local, di direct co to community service across this state. And this gift will thus leave a legacy throughout the whole Commonwealth by this gift to our college. The college now plans to make a tax task force to determine exactly how the money will be used. Following the deaths of nine racehorses at Churchill Downs, including two on Derby Day, the track has been re-inspected this week. Track surface engineers spent two days using specialized equipment to make sure there was nothing wrong. Their analysis included a radar towed on the back of their off-road vehicle to study the track's multiple layers. Of the nine horse deaths, eight occurred right there on the track, six resulting from catastrophic injuries. The other death happened in the paddock. 
The engineers say they performed the same test two weeks prior to the spring meet without any red flags. And with the retesting this week, they say they still haven't seen anything wrong. We have all these tests that we perform every day and we did not see any indications. We are looking at the track information to help the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission go back and look at all the pieces of the puzzle. The track surfaced at Churchill Downs. Other pieces of that puzzle include tests and necropsies on horses to try to discover any underlying issues which may have led to their injuries and their deaths.